Well, everything in here I can actually right now on and if I put the onions in, I can't do this anymore. But right now, I can put all of this stuff in my worm bin. Or if they, they don't like onions or garlic, so you just want to put all the other stuff in there. So let me uh, show you my worms real quick while we're doing this. There they go. Look at all those guys. Wow. So many worms. Okay, so they're going to get fed here with some carrots and stuff. So when you're stripping leaves, it's actually really easy. You just kind of come at the bottom and you just lightly strip the leaves. Now you want to make sure that you don't get that many stems in there, even the little small stems, because they will get stuck in your teeth. So just, you know, you can go kind of quick, but then inspect what you just threw in there and make sure you get all the stems out. So with these smaller ones, I'm just going to set these off to the side because the smaller ones will just crunch up very nicely and we don't have to peel them. Okay. The larger ones, the larger ones, they're going to be a lot, they're going to have a lot of fiber. So you like a potato, you'll peel them like you a just potato. Just peel them, right? Cool. And you, you know, you don't want to go too deep on them. Okay. And all of your moringa scraps, all that, and all these stems here, if you soak them in water for a couple weeks and let them ferment outside, you can uh, use them as a foliar spray on your plants, or you can also feed them in the roots of your plants as a concentrate, mix it with water. Oh, now see, I, I went a little deep on a couple of these cuts. Okay. So can you see, it just breaks open right there. And you don't want it to break open like that? Well, I mean, it's all right. You just want to take the outer. Yeah, just the outer fiber. We're going to get enough fiber cool. in our diet with these things. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yes. Tomorrow we will feel real clean and very light. I like that. Yeah, I had my moringa tea this morning. It's good when mom only lives a few, few miles away from you. That is cool. You know? I want to plant moringas all over the world and the world map that shows where malnutrition exists lines up perfectly to the world map of where Moringa grows best in the world. Yeah, So right. it's that's kind of what um, my business partner and I, what our mission is, is to basically explore that and try to eliminate malnutrition. I mean, ultimately, I know it sounds like a big goal and probably uh, idealistic, but ultimately, Moringas will grow and they will provide people food and nutrition. And malnutrition doesn't have to exist. These kids can have enough nutrition, especially in these hot climates. And Moringa seeds purify water. I mean, the seeds make oil. They can actually have an economy. Not only can they get healthy, as they grow more trees, they can make Moringa products and sell them and make some money. Some soap, oil. Moringa oil is very expensive. So we can get them an oil press and some, uh, orchard of trees. I don't know. It just feels like uh, kind of what, what I want to do. Right. Plant more Moringas in the world. Right. And they'll clean the air. They help clean the air, give us more oxygen. I mean, so many benefits. Bring pollinators and bees. They love the flowers. So, yeah, I, I'm a little obsessed. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. One of the reasons why I planted moringa in my backyard is because I wanted to feed my neighbors. Awesome. I, I'm nowhere near what my mom has produced in her yard over 20 years. I mean, she's like, like I mentioned, I think she has like 60 fruit trees in her yard. Wow. But I wanted to do something, not only for me and my family, but I wanted to do something for my neighbors and community. So I planted a bunch of moringa, moringa trees. I've got, you know, nine citrus, four peaches, two awesome. apples, low quad, three mangoes, awesome. lava, you know, just you. Three Barbados cherry oh, from cool. Seamus. Thank you, Seamus. Cool. Thank you, Don. So we're almost ready here. We're all about easy today. I like okay? easy. Really simple, which is why we've got Thai spice in a jar. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start with onion. Can you just chunk that? Yep. Got it. Just chunk it up. We're gonna get our garlic <laughs> and ginger. What do you like? You like that? That'll be perfect. All right. So we're gonna get you some some. Real chef's knives. Good knife. At some point. Okay. Sounds good to me. So, so what I've got here, I've got a nice J. A. Henkel uh, chef knife nice. and a paring knife. Now, if you have good knives, 
please don't ever sharpen them. Okay, if you do, maybe on a nice sharpening stone or take it to a professional. Every time you use a good chef knife though, you take your knife at an angle and just hone it back and forth. It just takes off all the, all the tiny little burbs. So just a couple times back and forth, that's why there's a guard right here so you can come this way. Okay. Okay. But as soon as you hone it, it just slices right through. Wow. Very, very nicely. Learning the leaves made a nice half of a pot on the leaves and you'd, you'd be surprised how, how much this cooks down. This, this actually isn't even going to be that much. No, it's, it's just like spinach. Yeah, but I love cooked spinach and I love cooked moringa. Most people take their cutting board and then just scrape the vegetables into the, into the pan, mm -hmm. right? Turn your knife over so that you're not dulling the blade. Oh, okay. The back end. Great idea. Nice little tip. Great idea. I learned that from my friend Adrian. He saw me using my good knives to do that. And he was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, when you get good stuff, that's when you start taking care of things. Right. <laughs> and there's always a difference between the pro version of something and the consumer version of something. And I, I've known that in cameras for a long time, mm -hmm. bicycles, tennis rackets, like why oh, does yeah. someone spend a $500 on a tennis racket? Well, there's a reason, because the $20 tennis rackets are crap, and once you play with them and once you get better, you have to use the $500 one, because it's going to be more accurate for you. And I think that's the same way with you know, right. knives or any tools. Absolutely. The right tool for the right purpose. My aunt bought me this particular knife in 1997. Wow. If you can believe it. Look at that. That looks, I mean, it's still a gorgeous looking knife. Is this Cost the first time you've ever used it? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I always kind of like to get the organic vegetables too, you know, just anything you can find organic, go that way because just supporting the local organic farmers and, and not getting GMOs and pesticides in your body. We're just going to slice them paper, paper thin. And now you can't do that with your normal knife. You've got to have a nice, a nice chef knife. Oh, nice. Yeah, those are some right paper thin. Nice here. little cuts. I was helping my aunt cook, and she said, how good are you with the knife? I said, I'm, I'm pretty darn good. It's like West Side Story good. Right? I know, the West Side <laughs> Story good, oh man. You know, it was almost like a Mr. Miyagi thing. Like, okay, you passed, you yeah. know. <laughs> and then you just slice the head off a fly <laughs> right. right in front of her. She's like, whoa! <laughs> so we're just gonna let this simmer on low heat, and then uh, let that garlic brown. The the onion, you can chunk it, right? Like it doesn't have to be, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, just nice chunks. Now carrots, one fun thing to do with carrots is you can French cut them. Whoops. I think that's what it's called. Oh, here. This oh. is American cutting. American, whoa! <laughs> that's some American cut carrots. <laughs> A lot of people just take a straight cut on these. Okay. And I know a lot of you chefs are going, he should be like this, you know, get your knuckle out. I've never been able to feel comfortable like that. And I don't slice my finger, I'm always very careful, right? So you slice it straight on. A French cut, you take it at an angle, okay? You lose a couple of small pieces, but once you get into the meat, you've got to, you basically increase the size of your carrot slices and your bites. Awesome. Right? And they cook up really nicely. Yeah, that looks great. These are kind of chunky. But this is more for a stew. Okay. So we're doing a curry. So we're gonna just take these and and get them a little thinner. They don't have cool. to be perfect. Okay, but... I can get those thinner. All right. 